All right. We're going to have a nice conversation about the why and how of a video branding strategy. And this is 2.0 because some of you have listened in as I've had great conversations with this dynamic duo about video. Uh, so uh, Sharon and Laura from Idea Decanter, thanks for being here. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks so much for having us. We're excited to talk about 2.0. Yeah, fantastic. So, you know, two, three years ago, video started really uh, being adopted. So if you think of the adoption curve, um, that was being innovative. Two or three years ago with video, it helped professionals achieve professional contrast and uh, really uh, communicate in an efficient way. As we all know, at this point, prospective clients do so much of their vetting of a new professional well in advance of meeting the professional. So video can really uh, help you stand out and capture someone's attention. But we're now at this point where video is pretty much a minimum requirement uh, in terms of your website, uh, any of your social interactions. So if you haven't done video, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about 1.0 fundamentals. If you have engaged in video, and I'm sure it's serving you very well, especially if you're using Idea Decanter, uh, we're going to talk about where you go from here. But I will tell you that nobody is better qualified, especially from the perspective of a fee-for-service professional, than uh, Idea Decanter. And Laura and Sharon have assembled a stellar team. And I will, you know, from personal experience and from feedback from so many people that have adopted and, and really relied on this team, we're talking about the highest production quality, but also bang for the buck because they, they've mastered the remote turnkey production, which means nobody has to get on a plane, nobody has to rent any fancy equipment. And they've even figured out, and this is a huge element, the whole dynamic around messaging, especially as it relates to compliance. So Laura, Sharon, you've been very, very busy. Before we discuss some of the 2.0 uh, ideas, tell us about some of your big breakthroughs and wins on the 1.0 level, if you don't mind starting there. Absolutely. Um... We're working with an advisor in Bethesda who created, has been creating video content for, I would say, in the range of four years consistently and has had some real breakthrough success with her video. And I think what that speaks to is the power of consistency. Walking into... Um, video marketing and expecting a single video to get the job done um, is probably an old way of thinking. Advisors these days are using video in an ongoing, consistent way. Um, but for this particular advisor, she noticed that some of her clients were talking about retirement depression. And it's something that I don't think a lot of advisors talk about because we see you know, retirement as this big celebration, and it's what we're all working toward. Um, but she heard the theme come up consistently and had heard from us that if you're hearing something that surprises you, it's worth talking about. So she created a video series on retirement depression, and it took off organically on YouTube. And she's had nearing a million views of her content um, and spent somewhere in the range of $150 on campaign spend. Um, but it really speaks to A, the consistency and B, the fact that she was paying attention to what mattered to her clients and creating content around it. And she's taken that original series we created with her and taken it to the next level. Um, and now she's creating content around the theme of retire to your happy place. Um, that weaves in both like expectations of what retirement is and um, healthy ways to get ready for retirement. And what's fantastic is that you can take an idea like that and instead of just making one video and it's done and you only get that one moment to promote it, you can create shorter 
very focused message videos on the same topic and you can stretch out that topic and you become the expert and the person to go to for those topics. And then that's how you create these campaigns that can just take off like hers did. Well, what I love about that, there's so much to love about it. First of all, the incrementalism that you said, like buying into where it's going directionally, not just like the one-off transaction, but really making part of the branding strategy, reputational equity, credibility, but also professional contrast. Like more and more financial professionals, I find, especially in light of the last couple of years, have embraced their enhanced role of essentially being a life coach and a sounding board and a resource for clients in between that dynamic between what money is and how, what is my magic number and what money does. What, what does financial independence do for me? And what are some of the unintended consequences? And it, it is powerful, that theme. I, I've never heard it referred to as retirement depression I've heard it uh, of it around anticlimax, right? Meaning it wasn't all that, uh, all that I expected, which is why many of our clients have been using the language around achieve the work optional lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? Go to work yeah. because you want to, not because you have to. Uh, but that's a very, very powerful dynamic. And uh, I love that. And I, I'm assuming that it's been a phenomenal validator for existing relationships, but also just an effortless bridge to get introduced to the right people. Uh, safe to say? Yes. And you think about the ways that video can help um, amplify your client experience. A series like this not only puts valuable information in front of your existing clients, but it gives them a powerful tool to introduce you to others. So for example, if one of Tracy's clients had a friend who was nearing retirement or maybe experiencing retirement depression, it's a no brainer that that video is going to get forwarded on and video. It's just an easy way to do it when you're um, pushing out video in an email and it really can help solidify those existing client relationships. And and make more of your time. I mean, time is what we have so little of and being able to record a video once and let your audience watch it on their own time frame um, really is what makes that mode of communication so powerful. So um, I'm going to uh, cover many different aspects of themes that people can embrace when it comes to video. But, but what I want everybody to really understand here, and I, I think you'll, you'll notice this as you get to know this crew is the X factor that they possess the call it the bedside manner. It's not just that they have incredible technical ability, but they understand what it is that your clients want to hear you say, not getting into this sort of uh, drone about core competency and credentials and designations and jargon in the industry, but what it is they want. And I, I never get tired of talking about this. One of my favorite videos, you can look it up on YouTube. It's Steve Jobs when he introduced the iPod. And right. So he's got his black turtleneck on and his grubby jeans and running shoes. And it's just him. That's his brand. Right. And um, he, he pulls out the iPod and he just says a thousand songs in your pocket. He didn't say what it was. He just talked about what it did and what that activates in the receiving audience is an intuitive knee jerk reaction where they say to themselves in their inside voice, I want that. I don't even know what it is, but I want it. And that was so far before the proverbial mic drop. But in one sentence, he created a, a tidal wave of interest in that technology. And that goes back a long time. You have to watch that just to understand that you're not marketing to yourself when it comes to video. You wanna to speak to what it is someone wants, and how you get them there and let them come to their own conclusions. 
So that, that's very powerful. The other thing I want to say to sort of dovetail that is I've been telling fee-for-service professionals to use video for a long time. And it's very common that somebody will say to me, yeah, great idea. And I've, I've got a guy or I know somebody locally who does video and they have the equipment, they'll shoot good video. But here's what I find. A lot of that video, it's visually very pleasing. They could be on a sailboat or playing with grandkids. It's all slow motion. <laughs> uh, there's beautiful music playing. But, you know, at the end of the day, it really says nothing. And so, so what I want to talk about is the difference between, okay, and I'll just use this analogy. There's, there's, there's some things you can't learn in a simulator. Okay. You need the mileage, you need the experience. And so, so that story that I've never heard of Laura about the retirement depression, which is just a phenomenal case study. I, I think you should actually, maybe if you haven't already done so capture that as just a proof of concept, how powerful it can be. And uh, so I want to revisit that, but uh, please elaborate on anything else you have that's been a, been a home run like that. Well, one thing to dovetail off of what you just said about kind of the contrast between the guy you know and working with a professional video marketing company that knows the ins and outs of financial service is really understanding what messages land. And we work with teams across the U.S. and Canada and really are in a unique seat to see what videos flop and what videos get great mileage. Um, but one thing I think is important to remember if you do go the route of I've got a guy is that you always need to think about your audience as a bunch of egomaniacs. I mean, our time is in short supply and there are a gazillion demands for our attention. And so if you really want to get your message through all of that noise, it has to speak to your viewers' needs. It can't be about what you want to tell them. Sherry, did you want to chime in on that before I comment? Uh, sure. So, you know, Laura and I are always talking, even though we do video day in and day out, we really think of ourselves as more as a problem solving business more than a video company. Because we've specialized in the financial industry and we have gone through everything you could possibly go through in the last eight years, what compliance will let you say? You know, what, as Laura mentioned, like what videos have really flown out of the park and what ones don't? And really, if you think about it, like the way we've constructed our videos with this remote process, we've created this video system where you can have that consistency like Tracy had, where you're not blowing all your money on one video and done, right? Where you can have that message being laid across the course of a year to build that audience and build those relationships and keep your clients nurtured as well as engaging those prospects that are interested in what your services are. And I think when many advisors create videos, they get hyper-focused on what would I want to say to a prospective client, mm. um, where they're missing much of the boat when your existing clients are a fantastic audience to focus on. And we work with an advisor named Ari um, in Brooklyn who actually had some amazing success with his videos and it had nothing to do with his prospective clients or his existing clients. He was creating content. He's been working with us for a couple of years now, creating videos on a monthly basis. And I talked to him recently and he said, I just doubled the size of my book last month. And I said, all right, how did you do that? And he said, well, I acquired a book of business from another advisor um, within my broker dealer. And I said, do you think video 
helped at all in that process. And he said, I absolutely think that that is a big piece of the reason why I was able to be the advisor that was chosen here. Because not only was the home office watching the content that he was producing and had this really strong sense of who Ari was and what he was about, but the retiring advisor had also watched his videos and felt like he knew him before the deal was even closed. Okay, that is so great. And that's on my list to talk about. So I'm going to come back to that one too, okay? Yeah. Because that is so powerful. And I know Ari, and I mean, great messenger, very low key, very authentic. Uh, but in the spirit of facts, tell, story, sell, uh, great energy around what he conveys. And you know what's fascinating? <clears throat> more and more of my consultations with fee for service professionals are talking about what it means to be a business owner, running a business, managing clients, managing a team, and less about their technical ability and core competency. And I think that talks about the evolution and the maturity of how financial professionals, especially, but also CPAs, attorneys, and other uh, fee-for-service professionals differentiate and conduct themselves. <clears throat> I, I want to come back to something, though. <clears throat> the the noise, the velocity of video is so intense. And it's funny, I had a debate not long ago because uh, I've embraced the world of cryptocurrency and blockchain pretty substantially. Like, I'm just fascinated by it. And I had a friend push back at me talking about how um, how much energy it wastes in the production and uh, he's a YouTube maniac, this, this friend. Like he's on YouTube all the time. And I said, have you ever done any research on how much hosting power and energy YouTube burns just to put out video? It, it's ridiculous. I mean, um, and, and I think my point is that the, the takeaway there is be very mindful about not just going through the motions and checking boxes with video, just getting it done for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. Cause we're kind of in that sort of, you know, I'm conspicuous if I don't have it now um, really be deliberate and intentional and play the long game. Don't think of it as a transaction. Think of it as an incremental build. And so what I want to talk about before I get to some of these other points, like the, the, the scalable growth that you talked about and some of these other things, I want to talk about a core theme, and, and I'm like a broken record on this because <laughs> back to the prospective client. Okay, so the best prospective clients are friends and family members of existing clients, and they're clients of your strategic partners. So any video you create, you want to speak to all three of those groups. You want to speak to your clients. You want to speak to strategic partners and you want to speak to friends and family members, prospective clients, that circle uh, of, um, you know, degrees of separation. Mm -hmm. And I like using the frame <clears throat> by saying, as a starting point, when you create a video, speak to what they're saying in their inside voice. And what they're saying is what makes you different? Okay. So the, the, the mindset there is whenever you're meeting with a prospective client, think of the third chair, okay? That prospective client has a current provider and all forms of communication, whether it's face-to-face -face or virtually, digitally, you wanna activate contrast. You want them to compare and contrast the way you conduct yourself to their current provider. So activate contrast based on that third chair dynamic. So the frame that we use is people, practice, process. Okay, so what makes us different? It's our people, our practice, and our process. Now, here's the thing about people, and I want to get your feedback on this. Many fee-for-service professionals that are team-focused talk about their bench strength, talk about their talent, and that makes a lot of sense because Trust is based it's as a starting point on the relationship with people. But I also like when they talk about 
the people they work with. Like, I love it when, for example, a financial professional says, you know, a lot of people ask us, who is our ideal client? And they go into that and they talk about who they work with. Now, they don't talk in terms of who they're looking for. They talk in terms of who they're suited for. And by having this conversation, they activate professional contrast and professional scarcity. We're not all things to all people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people ask us, who's our ideal client? Well, our ideal client is typically a business owner, a professional, or an executive in the prime of their lives. And they're looking down the road. They're five to 10 years out from an exit. Their needs are becoming more complex. Their time is under intense pressure. And then the video goes on to describe the ideal client. But, but from the positioning of social proof, not who we're looking for, no minimums, none of that, just describing. So, so to make it relatable, do you, do you buy into that? Well, I think with video or with any marketing, really, you have the opportunity to meet people where their needs are. So when you create an ideal client video, you're speaking to who you work with. And so the people who are watching that video, who are in that position are immediately going to say, Hey, that's me. Right. And then their next jump is like, wait, do I need their services? Like, where am I in my life? And if they don't already work with someone or if they're not happy with whoever they're working from, like the next step is obviously I need to go check this person out because they're talking to me already. They see me where I am. They already know my needs. They already know what my next steps probably need to be. And I haven't even thought about it yet. And so in a way you get to, you, you get to attract them two ways. One, you create that affinity because like your personality is meshing with who they want to work with. Cause we all want to work with people that we relate to that we have some kind of affinity for. And then secondly, you're already solving their problems. Even if you don't know their questions yet, because you're already saying, this is who I'm working with. These are the problems I'm solving for them. Mm -hmm. I'm here ready to help you. One well, the, sorry, go ahead. One of the scariest things that you can possibly do with your business is niche down. And it is probably one of the things that will rocket you to success. If you look at how we started Idea Decanter, we did not go in with a focus on financial services. Financial advisors found us and started asking for us to create videos. And we realized that if we said no to other projects in other industries and in other sectors and focused on the needs of financial advisors, that we could build a business that would take off. And that's exactly what happened. The same for you, Duncan. I mean, Pareto Systems the fundamentals of what you teach financial advisors could work for many different industries, but because you are in it and you know it, it has made you a success. And we see this over and over with advisors. We work with um, an advisor in Columbus, Ohio, who has niched down to the shot and caught target audience. Big game hunting and fly fishing. And until we started working with him, I had no idea that it takes a lot of money to run a chase those sports. And so he not only gets to spend his time with his clients doing the thing that he loves to do, but it is a fantastic word of mouth marketing technique to go after a, a target audience that is that specific. And those videos were super fun to produce because we got to use some really amazing stock footage and some B-roll of him with his dog. <laughs> I can just imagine some of the metaphors mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, the I love that. I mean, because for, for that client, it probably wouldn't even feel like work, right? It would just such be a, a be a, such a, uh, an enjoyable experience, but your point about being very deliberate about who you're suited for. Um, first of all, it activates sifting. It sifts mm -hmm. out good prospects from the mass of suspects. And you're right. People are drawn to that 
You're not chasing, you're attracting. It's also uh, from the standpoint of professional scarcity. Like when advise, when, a, when a financial advisor says, you know, one thing we've learned over the years is we, we don't try to be all things to all people. And our goal is not to see how big we can get. It's how small we can stay. Uh, for some of our more recent clients, they left a financial advisor who had four or 500 clients and they just felt like they were being neglected. And our goal is to never, ever focus on how big we can get. It's how small we can stay. And th that just makes it attractive and it activates this sense of belonging, which is incredibly powerful. Um, so, so people, talk about your own people, but talk about the people you work with and what their unmet needs are and what makes you different there. Now, here's what's interesting about what makes you different around your practice. This is such a powerful uh, differentiator is talking about the difference between client service and client experience. So client service sort of creates this image that there's a red phone under a glass jar sitting on your desk, your gold desk. You have a gold desk. Everybody, <laughs> when the phone rings, the world stops. When you have an issue, we, we respond. That's service that says, okay, you're a good person. You care. You have a high standard of care and decorum. That's great. But don't just talk about service in sort of general terms. Talk about client experience. Client experience is scheduled. Client experience is consistent. And when you think about why somebody leaves a fee-for-service professional, you know, when somebody loses a client and they call them up and say, why do you leave? Sometimes they'll say, well, honestly, you've got 400 clients. My new provider's got 150. I'm at a point in my life where I need deeper levels of service. Okay, that's, that's a hot issue. Sometimes they'll say, uh, our, our relationship just became a little bit uh, shallow and, and reactive. And I want something that's more proactive and I want to get out in front of my evolving needs. These are powerful, like the words matter to create that, that point of difference. And uh, I'm wondering, is that, is, our, is that starting to sort of find its way into your scripting and your messaging as well? Absolutely. And we have a couple of ideas that we really love um, to incorporate video into the messaging around your CX or your client experience. And one of them is to create a video um, that welcomes the new client into the family. So mm. the idea here is that as soon as they sign on the dotted line, this is a video that goes out as a part of their welcome experience. But you're not just saying, hey, we're glad you're with us. You are in a phrase I've stolen from Duncan, you are future pacing that relationship and you are setting them up. You are um, creating expectation for what is to come for them for the next six, nine, 12 months. Um, surprises are great when it's a birthday party, but many of us don't like surprises. So if you set the expectation and then can deliver on that expectation through those six, nine, 12 months, um, you've already scored big with your client in that first year. And that first year is so important. And then the second idea is to create video on a consistent basis. And you can record, you know, three videos in an hour each quarter and have a month, a video a month mm -hmm. of content to share out. And it will make your clients feel like they've seen you, they've heard from you, and they've gotten some perspective from you um, every month. And having that on a scheduled basis just makes that client piece of the client experience puzzle a little easier. So that's that's so your client experience when you think about the touch points. So mm -hmm. so a typical fee for service professional would would touch uh 34 or touch their triple A clients 34 times mm -hmm. plus or minus throughout the year. So video having those in the bank, right? In the can ready to go, that's supplementing the client experience because those are one-to-many, very efficient touch points then? Exactly. And, you know, it's something that can be used beyond your AAA client list too. Um, your client list should obviously be segmented, but you can create messaging that works for your entire client roster and record it all at once. 
One of the nice things about video is that it's ready to go whenever you need it. So we just worked with um, Amy and Pam up in Vancouver and, or not Vancouver, Victoria, sorry. And they needed an onboarding video that explained to their clients, after you've signed up with us, here's what we're doing behind the scenes because it was taking, because of COVID and other issues, was taking up to eight weeks for all the paperwork and data mm -hmm. to be transferred. And they didn't want, you know, nobody likes to sign on the dotted line and then hear nothing for two months. True. Right? Like, that's not a good client experience. So they created this video saying, we're working on it. This is all the stuff we're doing for you while you're waiting. And it's ready to go out every single time they sign now. They don't have to like create it from scratch every single time. Um, and for them, it's that first touch. Well, maybe not quite the first touch, maybe the fourth, <laughs> right? So they've signed, now they've got this. And then their next communication with them, it's not like out of the blue two months later. They've already had this interaction to keep it warm, to keep that relationship warm. Hey, speaking of warmth, uh, Laura, you got to get onto the uh, barn board backdrop. I mean, <laughs> look at how good this is. <laughs> But and Sharon, I've got barn board envy because I'm kind of thinking that maybe I should have uh, gone horizontal <laughs> with my boards. I mean, mine are nice, but I do like that. For the audio listeners, I have green paint on my walls. I do not have weathered barn board. <laughs> yes, you you have a very nice, clean, modern aesthetic. We are very much Pacific Northwest here. Looks yes, warm. yeah, well said. <laughs> uh, is that a functional lamp or is that just for optics? Just for this yeah. one. Yeah. That's the ring light that we send our clients. Yeah. So any of that, um, every client we work with with Idea Kit has one or several of those around their office. Okay. So good point. So when you when you onboard a client, they are not left to their own devices to put together their kit. Yeah. They uh, it's turnkey. Okay. That's that's actually I forgot to mention that. That's a good point. Um, speaking of process. Okay. So. Talk about your people, both in terms of who's on your bench and who you are suited for. Talk about your practice and the client experience it creates and the consistency to set those expectations. And then talk about your process and be a broken record. You know the old saying, right? Give a boy a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah. Just keep hammering process over and over and over again. Because don't, don't, don't talk in generalities. Mm -hmm. Oh, I help people achieve their financial goals and we take a holistic approach. No, that's an intention. Talk in terms of what's proprietary. And this is so key. When you, when you think about where fee-for-service professionals have come from and where they are today, they started off in a mindset of having good knowledge. Okay, I'm knowledgeable. Credentials, designations, I take it seriously. That was great. Then it evolved to expertise. So they started to narrow in terms of who their ideal client was and then broaden the fact that they weren't just, you know, asset managers. Asset management became part of the process. They started putting all the pieces of the puzzle together and going deeper in their expertise. And that was great. The next frontier that we're at today is intellectual property. A fee-for-service professional who thinks for a living is not transacting trading time for money. They are building something. They're building a business. They're building advocate relationships. And every investment of effort they make contributes to their intellectual property. It's an actual asset. And video contributes to that, which is why the long game, the incrementalism is so important, but also the brevity, keep the videos brief, the specificity, talking in meaningful specifics, and proprietary. You can only get my value from me. There's nobody else out there that does it the way we do it. It's our way. It's our process. So I'm sure now, well, you've been doing this for a long time, you're making sure that your clients adhere to not talking in generalities, but talking in meaningful, proprietary specifics around being process driven. Is that safe to say? I, it is safe to say. And let me tell you a story about our own business that I think proves your point. 
you know, we worked with financial advisors and we produced videos for them. And we always had kind of a behind the scenes process, but nothing that we ever felt like we need to walk you through up front mm. until we had the revelation that people buy in to a process. And so Sharon and I sat down and Sharon's the amazing graphic artist among us. And she, we stepped out the stages just as any financial advisor has in their process. You already are doing it, but you might not have built it into something. And Sharon created this visual process that has 12 circles that all lead to each other and kind of winds Mm -hmm. up and down and up and down. And it is one of the first things that I cover when an advisor comes to a data canter asking about creating video, I say, well, would you mind if I showed you this? This is how it works and walk them through the 12 steps of the connect with clients formula and having a name for it and having a visual layout for it solidifies that we know what we're doing. This isn't going to be some slap shot kind of production process, we are following steps. And these are the kind of results that you can get when you follow those steps. And it has made a tremendous difference when we are talking, when I'm talking to advisors and being able to show them that visual. And so when it comes to an advisor turning that into a video marketing tool, you think about, you know, sitting down with a prospective client and having the chance to have that conversation and walk them through something visually that solidifies the value of what you do. That's great. But also having it in a video as a tool for people who are going to Google you and discover things about you before they ever book that first call. um, That's great. Or as you are working through your fit process to see if that prospective client really is a good fit for you. You're a good fit for them. You've talked about your process. Why not send the process video in a follow-up email to help reinforce this is the way we do it and this is how we're different. Okay, well, this is very, very good. Let's let's pivot now to some of the nuances. And uh, I love the fact that you are such serious students and you're constantly refining and optimizing your own approach, but it's also validating for a fee-for-service professional. When you future pace and demystify and set expectations for something new that they've never done before, they're buying into that. They know where it's all going and it probably reinforces for them that I have to ensure I'm not my own best kept secret and people know what they're buying on into on my end, which yeah. is great. So. So you're saying from a one-to-many perspective, in addition to uh, using video as part of the onboarding process to supplement the sequence, you can also do it in the fit process progression. So is there still a prospective client working through the fit and, and coming to terms with the fact that, you know what, I've got to disassociate from my current provider because this is superior You're saying video supplements that fit process progression as well. Yeah. I mean, think about building a relationship with someone. You have a phone call, you have a meeting, you have a follow-up phone call. What if you could double or triple the amount of affinity that you're building and the connection without having any more phone calls or meetings? And you can do that with video. Um, Many of our advisors when a prospective client is um, just beginning to build a relationship with them, when they schedule the first meeting, they will also send out a video um, that could be something like a shoot your trailer, which sets out you know the ideas of family, occupation, recreation, and all for the money, right? Um, so it could also be a video that you introduce your why and talk about what motivates you to be a financial advisor. But the advisors we work with who are sending out a video with that meeting confirmation often tell me that they sit down with a prospective client and get, I feel like I already know you Mm. from the prospective client. And that is a great place to start building the relationship. It's, it's predisposition amped up 
in mm-hmm. advance. So, so the trust, so you think about it, if I'm introduced to you, I've got the credibility of the rainmaker and the way they articulated your value. They said, you've got to talk to Sharon and Laura. So I've got that as fuel. Then I, I raise my hand. I opt in. I say, okay, tell me more. Show me what it looks like. So I've got, it's like this collision of energy between how I feel about you, trusting you, feeling like I need to do this. That's also supplemented by the advocacy. And then, you know, the bar is low based on my current provider. So it just, it's just comes together perfectly. So, okay, that's, that's terrific. I never thought about that, but that's great. Um, I want to come back to a se- for a second on the distinction between the B to C organic growth and the B to B, like you described with Ari, because that is another frontier. More and more <clears throat> financial professionals and fee for service professionals, they've they've rounded out their business to client organic growth model to such a degree it's become an intellectual property that's so well defined and professionalized that now they can monetize on that too by going out and attracting somebody else to draft in behind that process or to go out and acquire a business from somebody who's retiring or uh, is just feeling too much friction and they want to uh, uh, bow out. So video uh, has has supplemented that uh, driver as well from the standpoint of professional contrast. And so so if I'm if I'm somebody who's thinking about selling their business, I'm thinking, okay, are my clients going to be in good hands? Number one. Number two, is this going to really secure my legacy? Okay, from a continuity and succession perspective. And am I going to be able to monetize properly? Video helps me get there. I think absolutely. And I think just like we keep talking about affinity, whether whether it's B2C or B2B, you're still working on relationships and affinity and creating those connections. If you're selling your business to somebody else and you don't want your clients being left behind, you want those clients to get the same care that you've been giving them all of these years. And so in order to create that trust that you're going to do the same that the previous advisor did, you can use any kind of messaging. Video definitely is part of it. And this is when I think you have to start talking about quality. Mm -hmm. You can do video. You can do a Zoom video. uh, You can do it in your car. You can bomb bomb it up, right? Um, (laughs) But at the end of the day, You don't need, let me backtrack a little bit. You don't need to look like a $100,000 car commercial because that doesn't feel authentic, right? Mm -hmm. That feels too slick, too polished, like it's an actor. But you do need enough quality so that people know, one, that you're going to be around in 10 years, that you have had enough success that you're not doing it in your car, maybe, and that your message doesn't sink to the bottom of the noise because it's got bad audio and bad lighting and like the graphics look like they came out of like a cracker box, right? You need to have a certain amount of quality that represents the brand identity that you're presenting out to these people. Mm -hmm. You know, we have certain people who come to us and they're like, we want to give a Ritz Carlton white glove experience to our clients. If that is your brand to your clients, that needs to be represented in your video as well, because that advisor who's looking to sell his business, he's not going to go to the guy shooting in his basement. You know, he wants to give these, his clients the best possible experience with the next person taking over. You know, it's powerful. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Laura. I was just going to add that on the B2B front, you know, so many people have the expectation that if I'm going to create this video, then I need 500 or 5,000 or 50,000 views to make it worthwhile. If you think about Ari's story, it took one view to double his book of business. It is not the quantity of views. Mm -hmm. It is who is watching. And I have to think that in transitioning those clients over, 
helping supplement the soon to be departing advisors commentary. So the departing advisor saying, look, I've done substantial due diligence. I've chosen this advisor to take over my business. I'm actually going to stay on board as a consultant. I'm going to become a client myself. And this is why I chose him. And then if Ari had a video as part of his transitional process for those clients who are about to move over, I've got to think that's incredibly powerful. You better believe that's part of his content plan. (laughs) Well, you know, it's funny. The first time I can remember vividly, this goes back several years when I started to realize this is becoming a trend. Very good client of mine in the Northeast. He said to me, he said, you know, I'm probably going to bring on 50 clients one at a time in the next 12 months. That's how good this engine is. But why would I just bring on 50 clients one at a time? I could bring on 50 clients in one trend. So not one times 50, 50 times one. Like I can bring on one by one business and bring 50 clients on instantaneously. And it's so common. Mm -hmm. Those advisors that are process driven, if they go and buy like an $80 million business, when that money goes in motion and those clients come over, it becomes a hundred million dollar business because of the dormant vein of gold that's just been sitting there uh, untapped. Um, I also want to say, oh, and by the way, I'm not going to name names, but you know this person. This person acquired their first business. He does video with you. And um, dust settled beautifully. It was just absolutely a wonderful case study. And uh, he went to his conference. And now the word's out in his firm. And somebody approached him and said, "Uh, I think you're my guy. I think you're the one who I should be partnering with to take over my clients. It wasn't the lead advisor trying to convince the other advisor, you should do this. It was the other way around. It was so incredibly powerful. So as a proof of concept, you get it right the first time. If you're thinking entrepreneurially, you can do it again. And I will tell you that our number one client has done it 24 times now. And it's, it's like a Swiss watch of accuracy and precision because it's so process driven, but the video, like, I I love, I I never heard it in that phrase. I feel like I know you already. Mm -hmm. That's one of the many qualitative aspects to complement the quantitative benefits of video, right? There's some research that suggests that one second of video versus one second of reading text, the difference is like 60,000 times the amount of information. And you think about all of the visual cues and all of the auditory cues that come through video that you don't get when you're reading something um, that that I, I think that's what's behind why people will sit down and say, I feel like I already know you. And really, this is when video is so powerful because it's not, sorry, Laura, it's not always just the message (laughs) because your body language, the Mm -hmm. way you talk, um, your facial cues, all of that is giving information to the people watching you that, you know, just brings your, the affinity closer, right? So when we work with clients, we spend a lot of time making sure they smile because it's hard to read a teleprompter, hard to say your script and smile at the same time, but you don't want to look all serious and mean the whole time you're saying your video. Like that's not going to build any affinity for anybody. And, you know, it is our standard procedure. We do that ending take as many times as it takes so that you nail it because we want you to end with impact. We want you to smile while you're saying your name. We want you to have open body language, all of that matters. I don't know if it was you, but somebody said to me when I was doing video way back when, and they said, you got to smile more because you've got these (laughs) resting joker eyebrows. And if you're not smiling, you just get so tense and focused that you kind of look mad. So uh, I've learned a couple of things over the years. Um, Back to the nuances for a second. And I think we can wrap up with this one. And this is a huge issue based on demography and 
monetization is that I'm spending more and more time talking to professionals about begin with the end in mind. Every business is built to be sold. Every investment of effort you make on your intellectual property contributes to your enterprise value so far beyond just recurring revenue and EBITDA and how clean your books are and how tidy the business is in itself, intellectual property. And I am absolutely convinced that every $5,000 a fee-for-service professional invests in video, especially if they are playing that long game, adds $50,000 of enterprise value to their business because it just stands out from a thought leadership perspective, from a uh, professionalism perspective, and just being process driven around um, the fit process, the onboarding process. Uh, I, I don't know if you've seen this on your end, but I'm absolutely convinced of that. So I, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Let me let you in on a little secret about marketing spending with financial advisors. We have been conducting our own internal research on expectations around marketing spend um, for as advisors come to us asking about video. And um, one of the standard questions um, they fill out before we have our first strategy session is how much do you think the average advisor spends um, annually? 10% of a marketing of on marketing, 5% or 2%. Duncan, what do you think the standard answer is? Uh, I've got to say it's probably 1%. <laughs> well, if you look at kind of across industries, the standard stat would be 10%. Really? Most businesses set aside 10% of their budget for marketing. If you look at financial advisors, the most common answer I get on that survey is 2%. I'm kidding. So there was some research that just came out um, about marketing spend on trends from 2020 to 2021. And there was a dramatic decline in how much um, financial services professionals were spending on marketing in 2021. And if you think about, you know, the market was gangbusters. And that is a time when many advisors don't focus much time or attention or money on marketing. And then when market corrections roll around, financial advisors oftentimes look around and think, oh, well, I probably need to do something here. Hmm. Um, how, how am I going to stay afloat through this? But our recommendation would be, you know, whether or not it's 10%, whether or not it's $5,000 on video to get $50,000 in results is that you do set aside money and intentionally market when times are good and when times are bad. Mm -hmm. um, make it a piece of your practice. And that is where it really pays off. Yeah, because okay, when times so are bad, comment. it's oh. too late. Like when times are bad, it's too late because the people who have been consistently marketing are getting the attention. Right. You know, if if you wait till the last minute, your audience is gone. Okay, so so just to sort of round that out, um, yeah, client acquisition, your your highest level of referability when things are volatile because money becomes more topical. There's degrees of doubt that friends and family members have for their provider, so they go to people they trust for an introduction. Um, so yes, there's that, but you're right. Okay, so so when things are chugging along, do video to competitor proof your clients and prevent amnesia and loyalty fatigue to get out in front of their evolving needs to create that advocacy. So when volatility hits, you're at your highest level of referability to capitalize on that. But my point is the third or fourth benefit of video is in driving the equity in your business. So you have brand equity how you're perceived, how you're described, how people contrast you to the pack. But then you have literal equity in your business and the multipliers in what a business can become, can be worth beyond just EBITDA and the core fundamentals is profoundly driven by the degree of intellectual property and, and process driven they are. And I will tell you what, what drew me to this industry, and I'm sure the same was for you in some degree, 
of all the fee for service sectors in the marketplace, this is the most entrepreneurial, which means uh, notwithstanding those distinctions on percentages of spend, um, they understand that they have to invest in their business. And, you know, it's a, it's a semantic uh, point, marketing, branding. I really, I consider video to be branding. Mm -hmm. uh, and branding is how people internalize and socialize value to somebody else in the spirit of advocacy. I think it's got to be one of the most powerful uh, tools now. And of course, in light of what the last couple of years has done to the sort of overall psyche, uh, the the appetite for video is is higher, provided that the quality is there. Mm -hmm. And you're right, sound, lighting, flow of messaging, production quality without being slick. That's such a cool, sweet spot to find. So, um, Laura, Sharon, if somebody wanted to get started with you, what should be the next step? Well, I guess the next step is to reach out to us, uh, schedule a strategy call with Laura. Uh, you can find that information on our website at ideatocanter.com. Or you can email her directly. Do you want her? To <laughs> yeah, my email is laura at ideatocanter.com. Or you can visit the website. There's a button you can click and request a strategy session. Um, we are always excited to talk with financial advisors. And our goal is for you to walk away from the strategy session with at least a couple of ideas that you can put into place and start using in your business right away. And if you want some tips and tricks, you can go to advisor advisorvideoacademy.com. Sorry, I spaced out on our name. We have a whole YouTube channel dedicated to making you good on camera. I haven't seen that yet. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That's great. Um, okay, a couple of closing comments. And again, please do not uh, trivialize the importance of just the precision, like the words matter. Like don't, not using jargon in video, like not even like I, I catch people, I, you know, I, it's not a book of business. Okay. That's what brokers call it. It's a business. You're running a business. Like really be diligent and conscious of the words. Like don't even use circles of influence. It's, it's a value added support team, right? Like make every part of your lexicon client centered. Everything I say speaks to the benefit of the client. When you're, when you're, when you're, Working on your video, just imagine that there's a client beside you listening to the exercise and ask yourself, is what I'm conveying speaking to what they want? You know, what, what keeps them up at night? What they aspire to in their life? What's important to them? Like, just think in terms of that. Don't sound like everybody else. Make sure that all roads of what you communicate ultimately lead to your intellectual property, what's proprietary to you, and then all the other you know elements of your energy and your intentions uh, will come out. So any closing comments, ladies? I would add stick with it. We work with an advisor who just shared some stats with me. She, in 2021, began routinely sharing clients with clients once a month and prospective clients a video. and the referral or introduction statistics between 2020 and 2021, her introductions went up by 112%. So if you are in a space where you think, yeah, I wouldn't mind having more clients, then consider a system to create video content and stick with it. I'm wondering if you should put on trailer fees and get monetized on the back end based on the degree of impact you have on Lyft. <laughs> it is quite remarkable. I like that. Thanks for uh, sharing that business idea, Duncan. <laughs> Seed is planted. Uh, anyway, um, Sharon? Oh, um, well, I was going to say, video is vulnerable and can be scary if you're not doing it. And I would encourage everyone to do it scared. 
take the courageous leap because the first video is going to probably suck. And you have to work through it. We find that by the third video, people mm -hmm. hit their stride a bit. And then you just get better and better and better. If you go to our YouTube channel and go back far enough, you're going to see some pretty crappy performances from myself. <laughs> Laura was always a natural. She was born on camera. And I've had to work at it really hard for the last couple of years. And it can be done, is all I'm saying. It, you are going to hit that stride. And when you hit that stride, you go from being nervous and scared and worried about what you look like to having fun and being authentic and really making that connection that is going to create the engagement that you want. And the first or second can hit the cutting room floor and never see the light of day, right? I mean, but it's necessary just to work out the kinks and the nerves and get yourself comfortable. And I will tell you, if there's conviction in what you're saying, if you truly believe it and, and it, it's authentically representing your value, that will come out. And if you think about uh, Malcolm Gladwell and the tipping point, he talked about 10,000 hours to mastery. You've Somebody who does video with you, they've got thousands of hours of experience, but it's never been harnessed in an intellectual property like this. If they can just capture that and invest that into that product, whether it's evergreen or the, the, the blog approach, the energy will come out and I've seen it. And um, yeah, so, and, and you have that bedside manner to work people through that, which is such an incredible art. So again, please visit this great crew at Idea Decanter. First of all, join them on LinkedIn, okay? Because they're very active there. Visit their website and have an initial conversation to see if there's a good fit and there's merit to the exercise and to get clear in your expectations and then uh, to deploy it. So I just want to say thank you very much for coming back. Great conversation from my perspective and uh, we'll definitely do it again. So thanks a lot. Thanks thank for you having us. Again.